and we've got lots to share. So we're just going to dive right in. And a little later on in the presentation, we'll talk a bit more about my background and how Andy and I met each other. But let's get started. So as Andy said, we've got five objectives today, starting with what platforms work best. It's a question a lot of landscapers have when they come to us. Um, if you don't mind going to the next slide, Andy, I think you've got control of that. So yeah, what platforms work best? Uh, these days, there are dozens and dozens of platforms out there uh, for Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, uh, you name it. And today, I'm going to give you permission to say no to a lot of these platforms and really focus on which ones make sense for landscapers to be on and how can you most effectively use those, which is going to be better for you in the long run than trying to have content all over the place. So next slide, Andy. I'd like you to do uh, do more with these five different accounts. So the platforms that we see best for landscapers are Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and TikTok. And at minimum, if all you do after this webinar today is go home and secure your accounts, secure your handles on each of these, um, that's going to be really good. It's really important for your SEO as well that you've got your handles secured on all these accounts with your business name. I've seen this before where companies think, oh, I don't want to be on TikTok. You know, it's not for me. I'm not about that. Uh, but then when they do want to jump on TikTok a year later, one of their competitors has taken their name. Uh, and that's really unfortunate. And there's not a whole lot you can do once that happens. So just go ahead and make sure that you've got your handles and go ahead and get your handles on more than just these five too. Even if you're not going to use them, it'll help you in the long run. Um, what we're going to do today as well is go through what people are hanging out on which ones of these apps so that you know where your target audience is, and that'll determine how you best spend your resources amongst them. And it's really important that you don't just spam content on all these platforms, that you take the time to really format it accordingly to uh, where the content is going, which we'll cover more. And quality over quantity. It's way more important in 2023 that the content you do have looks professional, is creative, is engaging, than just having a bunch of content out there for the sake of it. Next slide, please. <laughs> Sorry, there's a delay. <laughs> oh, no worries. Um, so just a little bit of information about target audiences and, you know, what people are on these apps. So Instagram is primarily millennials and Gen X. So today millennials are ages 27 to 42 and Gen X is age 43 to 58. Uh, Facebook, primarily boomers, which are ages 59 to 68. And these are not just the only people on these apps. Of course, there's big buckets of people in other generations using all the platforms. But just to give you a rough idea of where different people are hanging out. Uh, LinkedIn, working professionals you'll find there. Interestingly enough, when I was checking the stats this week, um, there's a lot of younger working professionals on LinkedIn who are building up their careers. But that being said, you're going to find people at all stages of their career on there. YouTube, all ages. Um, it's used as a search engine these days. It's actually the second largest website in the world right now. And TikTok is where you're going to find one of the newer generations, Gen Z, which are ages 9 to 24 right now. And you might be thinking already, those are not my target audience. But as we go through the presentation, you're going to see why it's important to also engage these folks too. All right, so just sort of uh, thinking about what types of content you might want to share on social media. These are roughly the five buckets or sort of different categories of content that I like to use. And oftentimes I'll recommend to clients that you set up a spreadsheet. So whether it's a Google Doc or an Excel, and you have five different tabs with each of these labels. And then as you start to think about content throughout your day, throughout your week, you can just jot down ideas based on the different areas. So that when you sit down to schedule content, you've got a list of ideas. So you've got brand awareness. These are posts talking about you, your story, your mission, uh, showcasing your team. These types of posts do really well on social media, uh, especially if a client has maybe already worked with you. They love to hear more and learn more about the people who were on site on a project or things you're doing in the community, which is the next one, building community. Uh, social media is a great place to connect with your vendors, people that you support. A lot of landscapers also work with home builders, designers, uh, different people for the concrete and things that they use on the jobs. So it's a really good spot to give shout out, give credit to people you work with. And in, in exchange, they'll likely do the same for you. Um, social media can be used for research and development. So you can use social media to ask questions of your audience, gather information. Um, what do people use on what do people do on their decks in the summer? Um, what kind of trends are they looking for to learn more about? So you can ask your community questions and polls and use that to inform your marketing. Uh, you can enhance PR on social. So these are things that you might share what you're doing in the community. A lot of landscapers do quite a bit of community service and give back. So that's great to share on social. 
And lastly, and almost most importantly, is driving sales and leads. So definitely you can have direct call to actions, talking about your services, uh, telling people it's time to book a maintenance package or book their annual service. And you just want to make sure that not every single post is about getting a sale, but that you kind of mix it up, which is why it's good to sort of have a list of different types of content you can share. All right, so diving into each of these top five, starting with Instagram. Instagram is great for showcasing your work. Uh, you can do all sorts of fun seasonal content on there. Um, there's a lot of residential as well as commercial uh, customers on Instagram. So you can engage and tag your favorite businesses that you want to work with or that you're already working with. You can use both videos and photos to do really cool before and after transformations, uh, testimonials. It's a great spot to share things about your story, your mission, your team. Um, interestingly, more than 75% of internet users use social media for brand research. So this is really important um, as customers who maybe you've met in person and maybe you've already closed the sale or you're in negotiations, they're likely to go look you up on social media before making that final decision. So even if you don't have a super active content plan, the fact that you have a polished Instagram account or Facebook account um, it, it can be the decision maker between you and one of your competitors if you have nothing on social or if you have a really unprofessional looking social account. So just keep that in mind as we go through that people are using social media to inform bigger purchases. Uh, in terms of the exact content for Instagram, the reels, which are the short form videos, tend to do a lot better. Um, Instagram's algorithm today as we stand is promoting those more than just the images. Um, you want to use hashtags on all your Instagram posts. They make a really big difference on Instagram for reaching out for new audiences. So you can just sort of define the hashtags you want, search landscaper, search um, snow removal, different types of things that you might be doing in that moment to find out which hashtags work. Um, and lastly, a great tip for Instagram is tagging a location on every post. What that's going to do is put you in a whole new sort of feed on social and um, it's just sort of an easy thing you can do, and it doesn't even have to be the city you're in. It can be the cities you want to work in. So let's say if you're in Vancouver, you can start tagging Burnaby or New West or other surrounding cities as well, and you'll be put in those feeds too. All right, so Facebook. Facebook currently is the largest social media platform in the world. And just a few interesting stats about how people use Facebook. 56% of people use it to get information. And 30%, 37% of people use Facebook to get their news. So what does this tell you as a landscaper? If there's anything newsworthy going on in your industry, perhaps articles on climate change or what the snow forecast is for the next week or really hot summer forecasts, you can use that to share um, and educate your clients, especially how it pertains to maybe landscaping services that they're getting. Um, and then a few tips for really getting the most out of your Facebook account. You want to have a nice banner image at the top of your page, a really good profile images, and then all of your write-ups filled out. Now, the unfortunate thing about Facebook is they're constantly changing how many characters you get for your business write-up almost on a monthly basis these days. So you really want to have a monthly, if not quarterly, check-in on your Facebook and just take a look and make sure that Facebook didn't savagely cut you off mid-sentence in your bio, as we see this all the time, and have to go in and kind of rejig how many words you use to describe yourself. So just an eye on that is always playing a really good um, get. going to this Facebook page and like, it's an of the doc as the profile image or something like that. So really take the time and make sure that it matches uh, your website as well. As it's nice, your social media looks similar to your website and not like a totally different entity over here. Uh, Facebook also allows you to pin the most important post to the top of your profile. So you want to keep an eye on that all the time and make sure and sort of your latest and greatest offers or testimonials pinned to the top so people can easily find them. And another important thing to consider with Facebook is it is a pay to pay environment these days. So, Carly, um, your Wi Fi might be uh, cutting in and out. Um, we, we've lost you for a minute. Um, okay, I think she's coming back. Oh, sorry okay. about that, guys. <laughs> it's all right, you're back. 
Okay, uh, I think we were just talking about pay to play and how you do want to consider using boosted post to get your information in front of the people who not only follow you, but people who aren't following you yet that you'd like to be in front of. So Facebook back in the day, you used to be able to just post something and everyone who follows you would see it. It's sadly not the case anymore. Uh, you do have to pay a little bit to have everyone on your feed who follows you see your posts. So something to think about uh, when you're doing your annual budgets, how much you'd like to spend on your social media ads. All right, YouTube. So it's second largest search engine after Google. 92% uh, of internet users watch some kind of video content online weekly. So what does this tell you as a landscaper? You need to have video uh, in your marketing. You can use YouTube to host your videos and then embed them on your website. You can have direct information on YouTube to catch people's attention who are on the app. Um, but it doesn't matter if you are just a startup or a really established company, you need to have it in your budget um, to be making videos. You can start with your iPhone, you can go up to having a professional videographer come in, but it needs to be on your radar. When you're in YouTube, you want to optimize your accounts for views. So you can really SEO all of your content. Think about it in the same way you would use SEO on your website. You want to make sure you have good keywords, a professional write-up, um, fill out all the fields that they let you fill out because it's going to help your videos be seen. Um, YouTube ads are great to consider. They're fairly affordable and can really help you get seen in a big way, uh, especially with new audiences. And YouTube is great for sharing your content across other websites that you're on, as well as taking a YouTube video and then cutting it up and using it on social as well. Other social apps like Instagram and Twitter, for example. All right, LinkedIn. So it's uh, social media for professionals. A really great thing to do on LinkedIn as a landscaper is to establish yourself as a thought leader in your industry. And if you're thinking, you know, I don't have anything really to say, I just want to fly under the radar, I challenge you to think of, you know, what is your story? Why did you want to be a landscaper when you grow up? People love hearing these sort of uh, backstories to companies and most landscapers I've met started when they were really young and worked in a family that were doing it uh, or something they've been passionate about for many years so don't be afraid to just sort of think about content like that and share it and ask people to share their stories about how they started their businesses and share the latest uh, news on entrepreneurship on building a company and if you're watching this webinar today and you're thinking well I'm not the business owner I am the marketing coordinator or the sales manager um, you can sort of get questions and then ask the owner or the voice of the brand and ascertain this information from them and then put it on their account. And that works really well for just helping establish not only the business's Facebook or the business's LinkedIn page, but as well as the founder or the owner of the company's LinkedIn and using the two to sort of cross promote and hype up one another. And always make sure that you're using um, call to actions on your posts, especially on LinkedIn, getting people to go read a blog or read an article you're sharing. Um, something else important on LinkedIn is to use an image or video. You're going to get uh, so you show twice as much engagement than just a post alone. And LinkedIn is a great spot for building your brand awareness, especially amongst other companies you want to work with. All right, last but not least is TikTok. TikTok is all about the entertainment value. On this app, it's really important that you're clever, that you're concise. Um, it's not about just posting content for the sake of it. You have to really think out your videos a little bit more. Um, Instagram is great for increasing brand awareness, for generating new traffic and leads. So unlike Facebook, that's pretty hard to reach people these days, unless you've been building up your audience for a while and paying. TikTok, the algorithm is super easy to rank on right now. It's how Facebook was 10 years ago when I first started social media marketing. So you probably have about another year, I'd say, to use TikTok while it's super easy to get views, get attention. So I say, please, like, get a TikTok account and play around with it. You will be surprised at how easy it is to get attention on this app right now because um, that opportunity won't be there forever. There will come a point in TikTok's evolution where it'll be more like Facebook and you'll have to pay to get leads or not leads, but traffic exactly that you can then convert to leads. Um, when you're looking at content ideas on TikTok, there's all sorts of trends that almost come and go on a week, if not two weeks sort of basis. So it's important to spend some time as a customer on the app, just playing around and seeing what trends work. You can save videos on the app as you're using it. That will help you um, share ideas with your content marketing person in-house, or you can reference later to make your own videos. User-generated content and influencer campaigns are huge on this app. 
So uh, UGC is short for user generated content. And what that means is you would have an actual customer of yours sort of share their experience from front to end, which I think could be great for landscapers, um, just showcasing the before of their project. And then, you know, a nice scene at the end of them using their new patio or new backyard in the summer. So you can ask customers of yours that you think would be interested to participate. I would expect that you would pay a customer for this kind of thing. So either you give them a discount or give them a free service. Um, you'd have to work out the exact logistics for what makes sense, or you can hire content creators to come in and do this for you, in which case you would just pay them for their time instead of a complimentary service. Um, influencer campaigns as well, super popular on TikTok. Um, TikTok is really important to SEO your account. So Google is actually now pulling out TikTok videos and putting them in search, which is really interesting. So if someone's now searching for landscape design services or amazing before and after videos, these sorts of things are popping up right in Google. So even if you're not you're trying to get a TikTok user to be your customer, the fact that you've got some videos on TikTok, those will appear in Google where everyone is searching for services and contractors in their area. And lastly, but the, the first way to really get started with TikTok is just go and watch some videos and start saving content ideas that you like, because you have to sort of get a, a vibe for how TikTok works before you jump in and start creating content. And most people that I meet in consults who want to use TikTok have never actually used it before, uh, personally. So download it today and, and check it out. And we've got some blogs and information on TikTok as well that we can share after this webinar too. Okay, so the do's of social media marketing. Uh, please use consistent naming conventions across all of your profiles. So rather than have you know one name for Facebook and one name for Instagram and Twitter, et cetera, um, try to just be consistent with your naming format. It'll make it easier for your customers and your other vendors who are maybe tagging you in posts to find you. Um, accurate links. I can't stress this enough. We've worked with so many clients where we'll go to their website and see that they've linked to an old social media account or vice versa. Their Instagram has a link in the bio that was for an old website or for a blog. Um, really, you want to do after this webinar is a little link audit and just make sure that all your links are up to date. Uh, it's really important to be grammatically correct, to be accurate with the information you're sharing, to have interesting bios written up. So take some time and, and really think through this. You can usually copy paste information from your website to help get started on this. Uh, it's really important to be social on social media. Um, you don't want to just go in and be spammy or just be posting for the sake of posting. Try to curate a little community of your customers, the people you work with, the vendors you work with, and spend some time being social on there. Support other people's content, like and engage with other people's content, and they are likely to do the same for you. You want to make sure, as we, as we mentioned, that you SEO all of your content the same way you do a blog or a web page. So think about the words you're using in your caption, the hashtags, the links. Um, all of these are intertwined with Google algorithm and will help you be found. And lastly, you want to cross promote all of your content between your email marketing, your videos, your social media. Usually you can create one thing like a blog or a YouTube video and get quite a few posts out of it. So something to think of if you're stuck on content ideas. Okay, so some best practices for engaging, uh, be authentic. You wanna comment, like, share articles thoughtfully when with purpose. Uh, it's really a good idea to invite your clients to follow you on social. So you could do this in your onboarding process when you're signing up a new client or after a big project and say, hey, I'd love it if you could share a few photos on your account and tag us. Most people are pretty happy to do this as well as your employees um, and different business partners in your field. Just by asking people will do it. Um, follow people online that you'd like to work with. So let's say there's a big company in town that you'd love to have the landscaping contract for, follow them, start commenting, start, you know, you can even chat people up in the DMs and say, wow, this is amazing. I love what you guys do. If you ever need a landscaper, please keep us in mind. We're big fans of your business. People are happy to receive messages like that as long as they're authentic, right? And you're not just spamming people. Um, really good idea to be auditing your results. So especially if you after you've started producing some content, many scheduling tools and even Facebook and Instagram have some data available. So you can see what were the impressions like, uh, what were the engagement rates like, something to keep an eye on as you're going. And lastly, you really want to decide ahead of time who's going to be responsible for managing your accounts. So is that going to be you as the business owner? Are you going to have a marketing coordinator? Are you contracting someone out to do this for you? Or maybe you're just using someone on your team. 
Um, something that you'll find is a lot of people on your team likely already know how to use social media fairly well. Uh, landscapers usually employ quite a few younger people who are on their apps all the time anyways and would be stoked to have this built into their position. Um, so something you can ask when you're interviewing candidates or even just poll your existing team and see who likes doing social media. And you might be surprised that there's someone on your team who would be happy to take this on. Okay, and a few don'ts of social media marketing. Do not post the exact same content on every channel. Things need to be customized a little or they're gonna start to look weird. For example, it looks really weird when you post an image on Facebook that you used on Instagram with let's say 30, cap uh, 30 hashtags in the caption. So while those hashtags do a lot of good on Instagram, they do not do a lot of good on Facebook and just look like you had no time to sort of format it for how, keep in mind the average boomer is gonna read that post on Facebook. So you can tidy things up a bit and it'll look a lot more professional. Uh, do not use stock images for every post or really for any post if you can avoid it. Occasionally, there is a need for a really nice stock image, but they don't look authentic. Anyone who's in marketing will be able to spot a stock image from uh, a mile away because we use them all the time for other things, but don't use them on social. Um, don't confuse your personal account with your business account. So just keep in mind what type of content you're sharing and if it's appropriate for your business. Um, don't post only when inspiration strikes. So you really wanna schedule posts in advance and have sort of uh, some tools that work for you to take note of good ideas, good photos that you can share with your team and schedule in advance as it, it takes a lot of time to just post on the go. You're gonna get way more quality and better quality and more posts done if you can schedule time on maybe a monthly basis to get things done. And lastly, the quote that we're all big fans of over here is don't let great be the enemy of good. Start where you are. I know we're covering a, a lot of different content. Just start where you are and you will progress and get better with time. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, point three, plan your content strategy. So scheduling things in advance. A tool that we really like is called later.com. They're actually a Vancouver-based company. There is a free version you can use. There's also a paid version, which I think is about $20 a month. And as you pay more, you can have access to different analytics as well through later. Um, but it's a really great tool to use just to get things scheduled in advance. Okay, and just a little bit of bonus content here. I recently wrote an article on our website, which gives you 100 blog ideas for landscapers. But you can also go through this and just pull out all these different blog titles and make social media posts about them. So for example, here are seven tips for winter landscaping. You could just have a little listicle and provide information on a post. So if you're sort of stuck here wondering after, where do I get started? What sort of ideas should I share in this blog post? All of the ideas are broken down by season. Um, so you can go in there anytime and use that for free and check it out.